Greetings again today in that name that's far above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate your presence. We're glad to have visitors. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, page 1035 in the original Scofield Reference Bible. Now you can get the message and the singing and the music on this cassette tape for today, tape number 239. Tape number 239. Write in and request it. I'm going to speak on the wise and foolish virgins today. Matthew 25. I have a list of our cassette tape, more than 230 listed. Many of them on prophecy, telling about the rapture, the tribulation period, and the mark of the beast, and how to be ready for the coming rapture. Tape number 216, Tongues and the Chasmatic Movement. And many, many subjects you're interested in, I'm sure. And if you write in and request a list of our cassette tape, I'll gladly send your list. Then you can select them by title and number and write in for them. And when you're doing so, if you're interested in our proposed Holy Land tour, just say, Preacher Edward, send me your brochure on the Holy Land tour. We're setting this tour up for March of next year. It'll be eight days in Israel and two days in Geneva, uh, in, uh, Geneva Switzerland. And so we're looking forward to that great uh, tour over there. And uh, you may say, Preacher, I'm a little uneasy about going over there because of the terrorist attacks. And let me say something that might shock you. In the first six months of this year, only five Americans died in foreign countries. Whereas in the city of New York alone, 464 people were killed in the city of New York alone in the first six months of this year. And you're far, far more safe over there than you would be in New York, Chicago, uh, uh, California, Los Angeles, and so forth. And uh, I'm not a bit of afraid to go. God will take care of us, I'm sure. We're not going into danger zones. And I feel much safer in Israel than I would in New York City. I'm, I'm honest with you about that. And if you'd like to have the brochure, just say, Preacher, send it to me. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. You pray for me and write to me. We need to be much in prayer about the terrible drought that's hit the southeast. Somebody said it's so hot in North Carolina. It's about 120 degrees in some parts this past week. And over in South Carolina and all over the state of Georgia, someone said it was so dry until hens were laying hard-boiled eggs and cows were giving powdered milk. And the Methodists were using damp cloths and the Baptists were sprinkling and someone saw a dog chasing a cat and they were both walking. Now when it gets that bad, you know it's bad, don't you think so? Well, seriously, we need to pray for rain and that God will send us rain. We're having a baptismal service here at Northside a week from tonight and those waiting to be baptized will be prepared for that. And we're not going to sprinkle by any means, we're going the Bible way, put them under the water and bring them out. And so if you're a candidate for baptism, Next Sunday night, then look forward to it. We're looking forward to it. We take care of that. Now, Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took all in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. 
Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Now Jesus gave this parable in connection with the end time, in connection with his coming. Thirty-four years ago today, or tonight, I preached this sermon in the Bethel Baptist Church in Union Point, Georgia. There's a young couple there in that church, just recently married, except the Lord Jesus as their Savior. That was 34 years ago tonight, and they're sitting here in this auditorium today. Brother Lawrence was called to preach, and he's built churches, pastored churches for a number of years until his health forced him to uh, give up the pastorate. And now he's the teacher of our auditorium Bible class here at Northside every Sunday morning. He's doing a wonderful job. Good teacher, loves the Lord, good man, and lives for God. He and he, his good wife, Alice, and we thank God for them. And glad God sent them back our way. They are my own children in the Lord. They were saved under my ministry. And he will tell you something and teach you something on Sunday mornings here at 10 o'clock, beginning at 10, the Sunday school hour. And you can hear him here in the air-conditioned auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church. So come and hear this good man as he tells you about Jesus, what the Word of God has to say. Now, I'm glad I preached this sermon 34 years ago tonight. And God saved this fine couple. And that's what keeps us keeping on to the glory of God. Now there's several things I want to say about the wise and foolish virgins. I'll probably say more about the foolish than I do the wise. Now according to the scripture we're to watch and be busy when the Lord comes. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find him so doing. And so we need to be busy. Now this warns us about the soon coming of our Lord and people not being ready. Now these ten virgins here represents believers in Christendom, saved and unsaved. Now you have a lot of people in our churches today, they belong to our churches, that even been baptized, some of them, but never really been saved. Now the foolish virgins represents that crowd of church members of people in Christian today that claim to be Christians are really not saved. And then the wise virgins, of course, we find to uh, represent those that really have been truly saved. Now, you'll have that mixture in our churches all over the land today. Good fish and bad fish and so forth, as Jesus illustrates it in the Bible, the wheat and the tares, and on you could go, the foolish virgins, the wise virgins. Now, I want you to notice something about these virgins. Number one, they had a blameless character. They had a blameless character. They lived a life as clean as a hound's tooth. And they were virgins, the Bible tells us. They were clean. They liked to be in good company. Now, here you find ten people living as clean as seemingly they could, enjoying good company among themselves, not running around with a rowdy, the drunks, the cussers. And they were religious. And they had reformed, all of them, Half of them saved, half of them lost, but they had reformed and all of them living good, clean lives. Now you have a lot of church members today that's doing likewise, living good, clean lives. They don't cuss out loud. They don't whip their wives. They don't drink beer, and yet they're not saved. Now you need to realize you can live a good, clean life and still not be saved, and you see that here in this uh, narrative. Secondly, they had a noble intention. In verse 1, they went forth to meet the bridegroom. 
They had a real noble intention. They were going forth to meet the bridegroom. And that was something very important in those days. You'd have to go back and get acquainted with the customs of that day in regard to marriage to find out the significance of this uh, picture here. And so they had a good intention. They were blinded to their own real need. That is the foolish virgins were blinded to their own real need. Now they had a need, a tremendous need, but they were blinded to that need. Just like a lot of church members today, they are blinded to their need. A lot of, a lot of people go to church for respectability. Many go to church because they think it's a good thing to do. Some will say, I wouldn't dare to stop going to church because my parents went. And they're blinded to their need of being truly saved. Churches all over this land today fill with unsaved church members that's never really been saved. And you need to keep that in mind. The foolish virgins represents this group. Number three, notice their thoughtless neglect in verse three. They took no oil with them. Now as they went forth to meet the bridegroom, they had their lamps and the foolish virgins had no oil to carry along with their lamps. Now the wise virgins had oil with their lamps. Now you know as well as I that a lamp will not burn. You can't produce light very long uh, from a lamp with no oil. You might burn the wick, but not the, the light. It won't produce. You've got to have oil to produce that light when you're using a lamp. And so they went along with their lamps, but they had no oil with them. All their hopes were in their lamps of profession. They had made a profession and all their hopes rested there on their profession, but no possession. They did not get the oil. They did not get the Spirit of God. The oil here is a type of the Holy Spirit. Only what could be seen is what they had. And that's where it is with a lot of church members today. Only what you see is all they have. Nothing on the inside. It's repulsive for me to see somebody walking around on the street with Maybe sometimes a long robe and rope and a big long chain around their neck and a big old cross hanging down on their chest or their stomach. That's about all the religion they got, all the salvation they got. Nothing on the inside. It's all on the outside. Now, you don't have to put a tag on a cow to say this is a cow. You know what a cow is. And you don't have to wear a cross around your neck hanging halfway to your knees to let people know that you're a Christian. And usually people that do that, uh, most of them are hypocrites. They've got nothing on the inside. It's all on the outside. Now you may say, Preach Edwards, are you against wearing crosses? No, no. It's all right to wear a cross the right size and the right place and wear it for a good cause if you want to. But just to wear a big old cross for a show or wrap up in some kind of black or white rags just for a show, that's hypocrisy. That tells you there's nothing on the inside. It's all on the outside. Now here we find that these people had it all on the outside and nothing on the inside. They had their lamps, but that was it. They had no oil, only what could be seen. So really, what's on the inside is what really counts. Not necessarily what you see on the outside, but what's on the inside. Number four... Notice their helpless indifference. In verse 5, the Bible said they all slumbered and slept. All ten of them went to sleep. That's a picture of this day in which we live in the days of the apostasy in the Laodicean state of the church age. The church today has gone to sleep. Both the saved and the unsaved that are members of the local assembly. Their sleep on the job has ever been a time... When God's people need to be wide awake, it's right now. The Bible said they all slumbered and slept. So the church somewhat is at ease in Zion today and asleep on the job. The waiting time, of course, is a testing time. Our Lord is soon coming. Will you have oil in your lamps when he gets here? I hope you will. The time the bridegroom tarried was a time of grace, an opportunity for the foolish virgins. They were there sleeping and waiting. They had plenty of time to get oil. The bridegroom tarried. He waited. He gave um, ample time for them to get oil. But they didn't do it. 
Like a lot of church members today, Jesus tearing is coming, waiting, waiting for you to go ahead and get saved. Not just be a church member, be a saved church member because he's coming. And so they had ample time and they were indifferent. And religious people, they are very indifferent toward the things of God, even saved people. Number five, notice the anxious request in verse eight. Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Now when the cry went out that the bridegroom was coming, they started to light their lamps. But lo and behold, when they saw that they had no oil, they began to panic. They realized too late that they only had lamps and no oil. Now lamp in the Bible here is a type of a profession. A lot of people make a profession of faith and don't have any oil. Now the oil is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says without the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. Now the midnight cry is an awakened cry. There came the midnight cry and it's coming one of these days. The midnight cry and there'll be an awakened cry. And only those that have oil in their lamps will go out to meet Jesus in the air. Those that are left behind will be like the foolish virgins. They'll have their profession. They'll have the Bible. Also a lamp in the Bible is symbolic of the word of God. The Bible said God's word is a lamp on thy feet, a light on thy path. And so people, they have the word of God. They wear their crosses. They have their song books and so forth and so on. They have their membership. They have their place in the pew, but they don't have oil in their lamps. They don't have the Spirit of God. Now, if you're saved today, you do have the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9 tells you you cannot be saved without the indwelling Spirit of God. Then the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now you have those today, good meaning people, clean living people, some of them, they mean well. They'll tell you you get saved today, you get sanctified tomorrow, you get to all the next day. You receive the Holy Ghost later. They're in error and great error according to the Bible. If you did not receive the Holy Spirit when you made a profession of faith, you're not saved. Because He is the one that baptized you into the body of Christ. He's the one that comes in to claim that holy possession that God has paid for. And he lives in you and you're sealed by him until the day of redemption. Now there'll be many alarming discoveries when Jesus comes. You'll be surprised to know the church members have the name on church roads. Their feet will never leave the ground at the rapture because they have no oil in their lamps. This oil cannot be borrowed. It must be bought of him who alone can sell it. So you can't buy the oil. Nobody can buy salvation. Salvation is a gift from God. But you got to have that oil if you have the light. When I was a little boy growing up out here in Madison County, a little country boy, uh, we had lamps in our homes. We didn't have electricity like we enjoy today. We had the old-fashioned lamps. And we, my mother would put a kerosene oil in those lamps. And those lamps had wicks in them where you would turn to the outside and up would roll that wick. And, and then my mother would light that lamp and we'd have light to see by at night or to read by or whatever. And many times have I seen my mother trim her lamps, trim those wicks. Now, if you don't trim those wicks just right, then you're going to have a a little blaze of fire and they're on one corner on the inside of that lamp globe there and it's going to smut up one side. You got to know exactly how to trim those wicks. How many people know about that? Let me see your hand. Yes, I thought so. Now you other people out there sitting in ignorance don't know what I'm talking about. See, you got to listen and learn uh, what I'm talking about. Bless your hearts. All right. Now my mother would trim those wicks. And then when she'd light that lamp, it'd be completely level and it would produce a beautiful little blaze on the inside, shine out through that clean lamp globe and we'd have light in the room. And she knew how to do it. My daddy didn't do it. He'd mess it up. He'd have one corner high on the other and have it cut out in the middle and sticking out on each side and mess up the chimney. But my mother knew exactly how to put the scissors to the lamp wick. She had trimmed the lamp wicks and light the lamp. 
Now, beloved, you got to have your lap wigs trimmed just right. And although they're trimmed, you still got to have oil in that lamp. My mom would say, Virgil, go get the kerosene can, a jug. And I'd go get the kerosene jug. And, and she'd pour that thing full of kerosene. And we'd have a good light for a long time by those lamps. Now, you people missed that. I'm sorry. You just wasn't born early enough. You didn't enjoy that. We enjoyed that in those days, so I'm sorry about that. Nothing I can do about it. But anyway, you got to have oil in your lamps or they won't burn. You want to have the light. Now, this oil cannot be burned. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? And so God gave the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost since that time to every believer. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18, I counsel thee to bow me gold tried in the fire. Thou mayest be rich in white raiment. Thou mayest be clothed that the shame of thy neckness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye says that thou mightest see or mayest see the Bible said. So you must have the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God to rightly belong to the Lord. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 21, Jesus said the rich young ruler that had everything seemingly he needed. He had the lamp and the, he had the um, a little burn of the air and so forth, but he didn't have the oil. Jesus said, one thing thou likest, one thing thou likest. Now you can be a church member. You can be very religious, live a clean life, live a pure life as far as you're concerned. And still there could be one thing lacking, and that would be the oil in your lamp. Do you have oil in your lamp, children? I hope you do. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1, here's how you get it. Ho, everyone that thirsts is come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and yet without money and without price. That's the way you get the oil. It's without money and without price. It's given of God. It is the Holy Spirit himself that comes in to live. And so we know they had an anxious request. They said, we don't have any oil. They discovered they had no oil. It's too late to get saved when the rapture takes place. It's too late to go up when the rapture takes place and you're lost. You can't get saved in a spur of a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That's the way the rapture is going to take place. If you're unsaved and the rapture takes place, you are left here. If the rapture takes place while you're unsaved, you are left here. I don't care who you are. You may have the lamp, the wick, but no oil. And you must remember that. Number six, notice their earnest endeavor in verse 10. The Bible said they went to buy. Do you see that? They went to buy. The earnestness did not save them. They were sincere. They rushed to buy. They panicked. They went to buy. They were seeking when they should have been rejoicing. Now the five wise virgins, they were rejoicing and uh, having a good time at the wedding. And these were seeking to try to get in when they should have been already in and rejoicing. So you have nothing to rejoice about after the rapture takes place if you're left here. Those that were ready went in. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You shouldn't put off salvation another minute, another hour. You shouldn't do it. Right now is the time. You may die before nightfall. You don't know. That's why you better be ready. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44, Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. This world's not looking for Christ today. They're looking for everything but the Lord. And the Bible said He's coming. Number seven, I want you to notice their fearful disappointment in verse 11. At which came the virgins, but the door was shut. After they had rambled around to get oil, and they came hurrying back to get into wedding, and lo and behold, that door was shut. The Bible said when God opens, no man can close. And when God closes, no man can uh, open. Now when God told Noah to build the ark, God didn't say, Noah, I want you and your family to go in. God said, come in. 
And Noah and his family came in through that door. And when the last one went through that door, God shut that door. And when God shuts the door, no man can open that door if God doesn't want to open. God shut the door. That's coming a day whenever people want to get in. But Jesus said, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. The only way God will know you is by you accepting his son, Jesus Christ, as your savior. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, it says, Without the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. The Holy Spirit is that oil. Children, do you have any oil in your lamps? If you're saved, you do have. If you're not saved, you don't have. It's that simple. There are some of you out in the radio listening audience. You got your name somewhere on the church roll. Maybe you've attended Sunday school as a child. Maybe you've reformed a few times. But do you really have oil in your lamp? Now you listen to this Baptist preacher. Do you really have oil in your lamp? Or you say, now preacher, I don't hardly know about that. Well, chances are you don't have. And what you need to do is get some oil in your lamp. Because if you die without it, the rapture takes place without it, then it's terrible. You'll go to hell if you'll die without it. Let me ask you again, children, do you have any oil in your lamps? If you don't have oil in your lamps, you're like the foolish virgins. If you do have oil in your lamps, you're like the wise virgins and you're saved. If you don't have oil in your lamps, you can get some oil in your lamps today. Even you in the radio listening audience can get oil in your lamp today and why not do it? Many years ago out in Oregon, no lumber camp, there were some lumberjacks that go into town on the weekend, spend their money, drink liquor, and have what they call a good time. One Sunday night on the way back to the camp, they passed by an old tabernacle where they were having a meeting. And they decided, there's three of them, they decided to go in. They sat down in the back. And they sang and the preacher preached. And they gave the invitation. One of them got under great conviction, began to tremble and weep. He said to the other two, I'm going down there and get saved. They said, why well, are you a fool? He said, just wait. We'll all come back sometime later and go with you. He said, no, i got to go. And they said, well, we are not going. He said, I'm going. And so the two that did not get saved slipped out the door. And the other went down, fell down on his knees, repented of his sins, received Christ as his Savior, got up and gave a wonderful testimony. He went back to the camp praising God all the way to the camp. When he got back to the camp, he told the other lumberjacks he'd accepted the Lord. The next day, he went down to the old sawmill. They started sawing the logs, and something happened and went wrong. And that blade flew off and hit that boy and cut him up. And they pulled him aside, and he was bleeding. And they tried to get the doctor, and he said, I want to see the preacher that preached last night in the tabernacle. They rushed and found the preacher. They brought the preacher in, and he was turning pale. He was losing so much blood. And uh, he saw the preacher and looked up at him. The preacher kneeled upon his knees. And the boy whispered something. He said, preacher, said, I got saved just in time, didn't I? Preacher, I got saved just in time, didn't I? The preacher said, yes, son, you sure did. He closed his eyes, went home to be with God. If God should call you today, would you be saved? You might get saved today and be saved just in time to make it in. You need to think about that. There may be somebody in this auditorium need to get right with God. Maybe need to join this church and come back to God. Maybe somebody in the radio listening audience, you need to repent. You need to get right with God. You could be in hell tomorrow. Why don't you repent right now and receive Christ as your Savior? Thank you so kindly. You've all listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray today that you use the message Lord God, use it like you did 34 years ago when you saved Brother Lawrence and Sister Alice and you've used them all these years. May somebody else be saved today like they were saved and be used of thee like they have been used of thee. Our God, have your way. May somebody in the radio listen audience receive Christ today. May your name be honored. May Jesus be glorified. I pray in his name. Amen. Now listen to me closely. I'm going to let you go shortly. If you're in this building, you're unsaved. You ought to come down and get right with God. You don't have any oil in your lap. 
If you're in this building and you're backslidden on God, you need to trim your weeks. Your light's not burning right. It's smutting up the globe. You need to trim your weeks that you might be a bright and shining light. Right down here at this altar is a good place to get your weeks trimmed. If you're in this building and you're looking for a church home like Northside, you want to come down and join as a candidate for baptism, or by letter or by statement, you may come. We'll be baptizing people next Sunday night. Maybe some of you like to follow the Lord in baptism. And while David plays, would you come while we wait? You and you alone know whether or not God has spoken. Would you come? How about it? Come on, come on and get right with God and let us help you. We want to. Would you do it? Out of audience this large, you couldn't convince me that not somebody here needs to come to this altar. Would you come? Come right on. Come right on. Amen. Amen. God bless this couple. that were saved 34 years ago when I brought this message he said Pastor Edwards I just want to thank you that you stood for the truth that you preached the gospel and we found the Lord we want to come back and remember us of that time when we found the Lord we want to thank you personally that you stood true to the word of God in preaching the Bible and wasn't a liberal or modernist and preached the word of God as it is to people like they are all these years I appreciate that, and Brother Lawrence, to my dying day, I'll never waver in preaching this book. I believe it, inerrant word of God, infallible word of God. I believe every word in it is God's word. I'd die before I'd compromise one iota out of the word of God. Thank you, Brother Griffin. Anybody else, would you come? Anyone else? 